do you also have to figure out when Claude should push back on an idea or argue versus, <laughs> so you have to respect the worldview of the person that arrives to Claude, but also maybe help them grow if needed. That's a tricky balance. Yeah, there's this problem of like sycophancy in language models. Can you describe that? Yeah, so basically there's a concern that the model sort of wants to tell you what you want to hear, basically. Um, and you see this sometimes. So I feel like if you interact with the models, so I might be like, what are three baseball teams in this region? Um, and then Claude says, you know, baseball team one, baseball team two, baseball team three. And then I say something like, oh, I think baseball team three moved, didn't they? I don't think they're there anymore. And there's a sense in which, like, if Claude is really confident that that's not true, Claude should be like, I don't think so. Like, maybe you have more up-to-date information. Um, but I think language models have this, like, tendency to instead, you know, be like, you're right, they did move, you know, I'm incorrect. I mean, there's many ways in which this could be kind of concerning. So, um, like, a different example is, imagine someone says to the model, how do I convince my doctor to get me an MRI? There's like what the human kind of like wants, which is this like convincing argument. And then there's like what is good for them, which might be actually to say, hey, like if your doctor's suggesting that you don't need an MRI, that's a good person to listen to. Um, and like it's actually really nuanced what you should do in that kind of case, because you also want to be like, but if you're trying to advocate for yourself as a patient, here's like things that you can do. Um, if you are not convinced by what your doctor's saying, it's always great to get second opinion. Like, it's actually really complex what you should do in that case. Um, but I think what you don't want is for models to just, like, say what you want, say what they think you want to hear. And I think that's the kind of problem of sycophancy. So what other traits? You already mentioned a bunch, but what, what other that come to mind that are good in this Aristotelian sense yeah. for a conversationalist to have? Yeah, so I think, like, there's ones that are good for conversational, like, purposes. So, you know, asking follow-up questions in the appropriate places um, and asking the appropriate kinds of questions. Um, I think there are broader traits that feel like they might be more impactful. So one example that I guess I've touched on, but that also feels important and is a thing that I've worked on a lot is uh, honesty. And I think this like gets to the sycophancy point there's a balancing act that they have to walk, which is models currently are less capable than humans in a lot of areas. And if they push back against you too much, it can actually be kind of annoying, especially if you're just correct. Cause you're like, look, I'm smarter than you on this topic. Like I know more <laughs> like, yeah. um, and at the same time, you don't want them to just fully defer to, to humans and to like try to be as accurate as they possibly can be about the world and to be consistent across contexts. Um, but I think there are others. Like when I was thinking about the character, I guess one picture that I had in mind is, especially because these are models that are going to be talking to people from all over the world with lots of different political views, lots of different ages. Um, and so you have to ask yourself, like, what is it to be a good person in those circumstances? Is there a kind of person who can like travel the world, talk to many different people, and almost everyone will come away being like, wow, that's a really good person. That person seems really genuine. Um, and I guess like my thought there was like, I can imagine such a person and they're not a person who just like adopts the values of the local culture. And in fact, that would be kind of rude. I think if someone came to you and just pretended to have your values, you'd be like, that's kind of off-putting. Um, it's someone who's like very genuine and insofar as they have opinions and values, they express them. They're willing to discuss things though. They're open-minded, they're respectful. And so I guess I had in mind that the person who, like if we were to aspire to be the best person that we could be in the kind of circumstance that a model finds itself in, how would we act? And I think that's the kind of uh, the guide to the sorts of traits that I tend to think about. Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful framework I want you to think about this, like a world traveler. And while holding on to your opinions, you don't talk down to people. You don't think you're better than them because you have those opinions, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You have to be good at listening and understanding their perspective. Uh, even if it doesn't match your own. So that, that's a tricky balance to strike. 